25 and 52. Mind to verse 6, verse 45 and 52. Okay. Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to be tied up while he sent the multitude away. And when he, when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to, to pray. Now when everything came, the, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the deck. Now, then he saw them straining and rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. But immediately he took to them, and said to them, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves, beyond measure and marvel. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word. And we pray for the guidance, for the conviction of your spirit, so that we will understand the truth behind your written word. And Father, use me as your channel of your blessing, channel of your revelation, for I can do nothing apart from you, Lord God. Let your anointing be upon your servant, be upon us all, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This afternoon is about the issues of life. Are you with me now? Amen. Yes? Okay, so... Before, before going any further, I, I've used this verse with our topic guarding our hearts. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. Do you know this? Uh, infection cycle or in, uh, the in, in, infection chain of... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Chain of infection cycle or uh, how, do you, how, how do you call it, Nick? <laughs> okay, this is how inf infection cycle goes, or this is this is how it goes. This is its cycle. From an organism, there is a reservoir. If I say reservoir, the one who carries the microorganism. Okay, and then there is a portal of exit. That's why when we sneeze, once once you start talking, I will stop talking. <laughs> When we sneeze, we cover our mouth because we don't want to spread the germs. Are you with me? So that's the portal of exit. Then the transmission, once, once you sneeze or when you don't cover your mouth with your hanky, you just cover it with your mouth, you hold the, the, the doors or you handshake your brothers in church, you're passing the germs. Yes. Yeah, so that's the transmission. And then portal of entry, it could be you can breathe them, you could be, have an incision or a skin break, you get the infection. That is called the portal of entry. And then, vulnerable ghosts, these are people who are weak in themselves. You could get the virus every day, but since we have our defense mechanism against virus, we don't get infected right away. But when you are weak, you could get infected. Are you with me? Yes. Let's say for example the flu virus. We could get it anytime, it's just we are immune or we are strong, but when we are weak, we, we are easily affected. That's why it's called vulner vulnerable host. Okay, let's look another picture. So there's the disease, a human reservoir, portal of exit, transmission, portal of entry, and then this is in your house. Let me ask you, why do you, why do you wash your hands? To remove the germs. To remove the germs or to break the transmission of, of virus or organism. 
Let me ask another question. When do you wash your hands? Every time? Uh, maybe you are obsessive possessive. <laughs> if you wash your hands every time. Give me particular occasions when you wash your hands. Okay, before eating. Why? Because if we don't wash our hands, we might have touch or it is infected with microorganisms and if we are taking or eating the microorganisms and taking it in for the long entry. Yes? After eating, we wash our hands again because we don't want to spread the germs. Especially when you, when you go to the toilet, you should wash your hands. <laughs> yes? Okay, so I'm just showing you an example because the issues of life works like this as well. Why? Because there's a disease, a human reservoir, portal of exit, transmission, portal of entry, and then disease in your house. Okay, so are we ready for this topic? For us to guard our heart, for out of it are the issues of life. From the verses we bring, what are the issues of life there? Any idea? 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Eight verses. There should be issues of life there. Any issues from there? From the eight verses we bring? Do you, do you understand if I say issues of life? It could be truth or fact about life. Any idea? It's not, if, if I say an issues of life, it's not a gossip, excuse me. Any idea? Okay, I'll give you an example. First, whether Christ is with you or not, storms in life are inevitable. The way you look at me, as if it, uh, uh, as if you're puzzled. Does it make sense if I say it like that? Whether Christ is with you or not, storms in life are inevitable. Why? In this context, Jesus wasn't with them. Where was he? Come on, do you understand English? Don't insult me. <laughs> When the disciples was having the storm, where was Jesus? No. Which verse did you read? Huh? My goodness. No. Mark 6.20. Okay, let's read for you to know. Okay. When he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Where did you read he was sleeping? <laughs> it was another uh, 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 scenario. Okay, so when the disciples were encountered as the storm in the sea, Jesus was in the mountain praying. Okay, maybe the next one, the one you t you told me, is the one he was for a, he was sleeping at the rear part of the boat. Okay, let's see. Okay, so where is it? Mark chapter four verse thirty-eight. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Yeah. So. In this context, Jesus was in the mountain. On the other scenario, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat. So whether Jesus or Christ is with you or not, storms in life are inevitable. Amen? Whether you go to church or not, storms in life are there. You could not escape it. So since we cannot escape it, what we need to do? Pray. Huh? Pray. Pray. Then, aside from that, after praying? Okay, uh, let, let me make it clear. Do you understand if I say storms in life? Yes. Okay, storms in life could mean your problems, your circumstances, or crises in life. 
And in the Christian context, it is the test of faith. If you don't have faith, there's nothing to test. But since we live in this world, in this world, we will have tribulation. So you still have the crisis of life. So which one will you prefer? With Christ or without Christ? And crisis in life are still there. With Christ, of course. So whether whether you are in Christ or Christ is in you, whether you attend the church or not, crisis in life are always there. Amen. Okay? So the disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? Yeah. Yes? So we don't have a choice but to face them. Please uh, quote that uh, status from Joyce Meyer. We cannot keep running from. Come on. You forgot about it? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> you can keep running away from them. Are you following me? Can you, can you keep running away from, from crisis in life? From storms in life? No, no you, you will still the, look, face the same problem, you run away. Yes? You will still face the same, sto same storm, you run away. So, James chapter 4 verse 7, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This temptation, does the devil flee from you if you don't resist it? No. No. And, and, and the Bible also tells us that offenses must come. We cannot escape from offenses, so we have to face it. And so in the storms of life, and so in the crisis of life, we have to face it. Amen. Yes? Amen. Okay. So that's the first the first issue in life. Whether Christ is in you or not, the storms of life are inevitable. Second issue is prayer is necessary in life. Amen. Do we understand that, that prayer is necessary in life? Why? In verse 46, again, prayer is not a choice. It's not a choice that we can only pray when we wanted to pray or when we like praying. It is necessary, okay? If Jesus prayed, we must pray. Anybody here? Anybody here who thinks that he is more than Jesus? No. <laughs> Jesus himself, the Son of God, prayed, and we should pray. But the truth is, are we praying? As often as we need it? Yes. 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 Maybe for some, maybe for some of us. Yes. Okay. Because prayer, okay, prayer is simply a two-way communication. Prayer is not just asking God for something. Prayer is just a two-way communication. So when one speaks, there is a sender of the message. And there is a receiver. And then the receiver sent his feedback to the sender. So there is a two-way. If I don't ask you any question, if I don't care anything you say, that is not a two-way communication. I encourage you to have interaction because we're having communication. Amen? Prayer is not a drive-through just like McDonald's. When you say, Lord, I want this, could you give me this, this and this, and so on and so forth. And then after saying your prayer, okay, you go to the next window and collect your order. Hallelujah. No, prayer is not like that. But some to say, sometimes we behave like that. Yes, there are, there are so many forms of prayer. That's why if, if you read the Philippians chapter 4, four verses, be anxious for nothing, but let your prayers be made known with thanksgiving, with supplication. Okay, praising God is one form of prayer, but what I'm trying to say here, if we, if we need to pray, it should be a two-way communication. Yes? Okay, so a life without prayer is just a praying without praying to communication to the tower control. 
Do you think it is safe for, for a pilot without having communication to the power control? No. And it is so with your life. If you don't communicate with God, if you don't read His words, if you don't pray, your life is a plane without communication to the power control. It shows our dependency in God. If we pray, we are just telling God that, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. Amen? But most of the time, we just do without praying. We just work without praying. Yes? I have this habit of uh, praying. Uh, even when I'm working, before giving the medication, I pray, I'm praying to the Lord. I don't even start giving my medication without, without praying to the Lord. And then, sometimes I forgot, then I suddenly realize, I, I made some mistake. I, I, made, I was confused. Then I realized, oh, I haven't prayed. Do you, work, uh, do you pray before working? Yes. yes. <laughs> do you pray before you start your day? Before you end your day. How long? Every day. Every day? How long? Every day. <laughs> or we just pray, thank you, Lord. That's this. <laughs> okay. So prayerlessness is carelessness on our own. Do you agree with that? Okay. They could just have left without praying. The disciples encountered the storms because they could just have left without praying. Why Jesus didn't trouble because he soaked himself in prayer. Do you know that the 12 apostles were the results of an overnight prayer? Have you read about it? Before choosing the 12 apostles, Jesus prayed for it overnight. And then, out of an overnight prayer, Judas sits in. Are you following me? Yeah. It was Jesus himself who chose the twelve apostles or disciples and then there was Judas. How about our decisions in life? How about the choices we make? Even if we pray overnight, we still make mistakes. But I'm just pointing it out that that's how important prayer is. Which before we make decisions, decisions, before we make choices, we should pray. Ah, what happens to us when, when we get in trouble with our choices, when we get in trouble in life, that's the time we pray. And it's a bit late already. In the first place, if we have prayed, it should, we should have been able to make good choices. Yes? Yes? Okay. So third issue, what's the first issue? Whether, whether you have Christ or not, storms are inevitable. Second issue, prayer is necessary, it's not a choice. Okay, third issue in life, there are, there are vulnerabilities in life. Do you understand if I say vulnerabilities? It's difficult to pronounce, isn't it? <laughs> Especially with me, I have adventures. Okay, so what about vulnerabilities? Means susceptible to physical or emotional injury. Oh, sorry. What does susceptible mean? I don't know. <laughs> susceptible means we could be easily influenced or in danger. So susceptible to attack. Okay, so when we say there are vulner vulnerabilities in life, we are susceptible. We could be easily influenced or in danger with the attacks of the enemy. Do you believe Satan? When I say do you believe Satan, do you believe that Satan exists? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that Satan has, in, has its own army? Yes. 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 They are plenty, they are just one third of the soldiers in heaven. The two thirds are still in, with, within us, for us, on our side. But they keep attacking us. Who do you think Satan and his army will attack? The Christians, the children of God. They will attack their own. So, if you believe in God, and I've seen the movie, what movie was that? Prisoner. I've seen the movie Prisoner just, just recently. Uh, there, there are these uh, couple who keep uh, kidnapping kids 
kidnapping kids. Of course, kids. <laughs> but if it's an, it's an old person, we, we still call them kidnap, isn't it? Yes. yes? That's why I say kidnapping kids. <laughs> this couple said, this, this is a war against God. They kidnapped these kids so that the parents will lose their faith to, from God and turn them into a demon. Why? Because if you, believe, if you believe in God and your child has been kidnapped, no solutions met or no solutions has been done, you, you, nobody knows if your child is alive or dead, you could lose your hope in God yeah. or your faith in God. That's why this couple said, this is our war against God. So that people will lose their faith in God. Amen. And, that for, and for that reason, the enemy also will attack, our, uh, attack us so that we will lose our faith in God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Another meaning of susceptibility is open to censure or criticism. Are you aware of that? That every single one of us is susceptible for criticism? Are you following? Sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, I sorry, sorry to say, but that's how I feel sometimes. Sometimes I feel I feel disappointed. Sometimes I feel I feel weak. Sometimes I feel in despair. But that's how that's how our faith works. We are open for criticism. We could be influenced, we could be in danger of criticism because that's part of our vulnerabilities. Are you with me? Okay? We are more vulnerable at night. Do you think you are more in danger at night? Yes. 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 So, when the disciples had this storm in the sea, what time was that? Nighttime. nighttime. So which one is more vulnerable? Vulnerable. Nighttime or daytime? Nighttime. Nighttime. Okay. Especially in Bohol, when we had this earthquake and we have almost a month of aftershock, they said they don't sleep inside the house. They are sleeping outside the house because when night comes, they are in danger. They are more in vulnerable at night. And it is so with the fisher, fishermen. Yes? Okay, another vulnerability. We are also vulnerable to be alone or on our own. Do you feel, do you feel, do you feel uh, lonely sometimes? Yes. Do you feel alone sometimes? Yes. You could be alone, but you won't feel it. Do you agree with me? Yes. Why? Because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you could be on your own, but you don't feel lonely enough because God is with you. But what I'm trying to say, there are times that even if you have so many people around you, you could still be vulnerable to, be, to feel being lonely or alone. Especially when it comes to tasks, when it comes to duties, when it comes to responsibilities, sometimes you feel you are on your own. Are you with me? And guess what? People will easily remember you when they needed you, but when we needed them, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. And people will just make a status about that in their Facebook or in their timeline because that's how they feel. They feel alone, they feel lonely, and we are vulnerable about that. Okay, aside from that, we are more vulnerable in the water. Are you with me? Would you believe me if I say I can fight a shark? <laughs> Outside. Yes, good point. Uh, I, 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 I just, I just watched this. Uh, my, was that 
like it's super, huh? it's super girlfriend or super ex super ex girlfriend. <laughs> I just watched about it and she got jealous with him with his boyfriend, so she threw a shark on that building. So that's why I said I could find a shark, but outside the water. Why? Because uh, water is the shark's territory. So we are more in danger in the water. But if you take the shark out of the water, yes, I could fight a shark. <laughs> yes? But the disciples were rowing in the boat. In other words, they are in danger when they are in the water. <coughs> Amen? Even like Peter. Do you think Peter don't know how to swim? My goodness. He knows how to swim. He is a fisherman. Okay, let's see. Let, I'll ask you that since you are the one who answered it. I'll ask you. Okay, so when Jesus was walking on the water, Peter said, Jesus, if it is you, allow me to walk on the water. And Jesus walked on the water. And Peter walked on the water. And then when Peter uh, removed his focus from Jesus into the wave, he slowly started to sink. What did he ask for for help then? He could swim. Why did he say, Oh, Jesus, help me? Because uh, he, he could have fear. Okay, he could have fear. And that's part of our vulnerabilities. Amen? It, do you know that sometimes, uh, uh, or not sometimes, uh, Satan is an opportunistic enemy? Every time. He, he, he won't attack you when you are strong in faith, strong in your relationship, but when you are in trouble, when you have problems, that's the time he will attack you. That's why you will say, how is, how, why is it that in life, when I have a problem, another problem comes, trouble with another problem, and then another problem comes. Why? Because he is opportunistic. And with Peter, they were scared with the storm. They were scared that Jesus was a ghost. Now he slowly sink he was slowly sinking. Now he's more scared. He even forgot that he knows how to swim. <laughs> are you with me? In other words, no matter how strong you are, you are still vulnerable to be afraid. Amen. Okay? And another one? We are vulnerable to get tired. Who doesn't get tired here? May I know your secret, please? <laughs> okay, I will explain a bit of that later. And aside from that, we are vulnerable to be afraid of sca or scared. Nobody is excused. We are still human. Although we keep on hearing God's word, and faith comes by hearing God's word, but still we are vulnerable to be afraid of scared. Okay? We are vulnerable for attack of the enemy, as mentioned that earlier. Okay, for the issue in life, God sees everything. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay, in verse 48, then he saw them straining at Rome. How far is he from the disciples? Any idea? No? How long? You can answer how far? How long then? How long were they were they rowing? Ah, no idea as well. They left land in the evening. Let's say six o'clock. Mark chapter 6, verse 48. He saw that they were serious in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them. So from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, how many hours? No, no, 6 o'clock from 3 o'clock in the morning. Nine hours. How far would they be rowing for 9 hours? Any idea? Nine hours. Huh? A few miles. A few miles? Uh, any particular miles? <laughs> okay, I'll show you. John chapter 6 verse 19 So when they had rowed about 3 or 4 miles 
They saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat and they were afraid. Was it good enough after nine, nine hours of rowing, just three or four miles? Why is that? Come on, come on. I would like you to open your mind. Meditate further. Any idea? Yes! Although they've been rowing for nine hours, since the wind was against them, they only traveled, traveled three or four miles. But the good thing is, did Jesus know them? My goodness, you got to an answer. My goodness. Then he saw them straining and rowing. Let's say uh, three or four miles from here is it's about uh, nearly Rohampton or maybe Barnes. Let's say from here to uh, maybe uh, I speak Kensington. Did Jesus show that? Yes. 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 How about us? Can we show that from the front, that distance? Uh, no. 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 In other words what I'm trying to say here if Jesus saw his disciples from three or four miles away he could also see each and every one of us yes. so don't ever ever think like Duterte Duterte said Gosh, God must be hiding somewhere when Typhoon Yolanda happened <laughs> are you with me? Yes? So, God knows everything. He is all-knowing. He is omniscient God. Let's say, okay, I've said that already. The only, they only have traveled three or four miles because the wind was against them, but God sees everything. And I would like to tell you the same thing. Whatever your circumstances, whatever crisis you have in life, whatever storms in life you are in at the moment, God sees everything. Amen? Amen. You might have a cancer, you might have an ulcer with your wallet or with your pocket. God sees everything. And then, whatever you feel, okay? Because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us that God knows the intents and the thoughts of our hearts. He knows everything. He sees everything. Okay, fifth issue, Jesus came to them. So what pastor if Jesus came to them? God was, is, and will never be late. It's just when we are weak in, the, in faith, we think God is late. But if Jesus came to them, God came to them, He rescued them, God also will come to rescue us. God will also come to answer our prayers. He will never be late. Amen. All day. Eh? All day. But sometimes, do, you, do we behave? Uh, or uh, are we honest enough to admit that sometimes we think that God is late? Or God is ignoring you? God is not listening to you? No. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. If, you're, if you're just honest enough to admit, that's the truth. Yes. But to be honest, God was and, and is and will never be late. What happened to you and the Bible if God is... You like the Bible is a practice of the India. <laughs> practice of the India? Yeah, yes, I have seen that I've seen that I've seen the video, but but as we have as we have studied we have a topic about that, although God God meant it evil, it is still for our good. Amen. I, I don't believe in an idea that uh uh typhoon how do you call, call it in English? Hyen or whatever. The typhoon in the Philippines was a man-made man typhoon. No, I don't believe in that. God is in control of everything. Amen? Okay, so. We just have to understand that God has his own appointed time. It's just the man. The way we pray, Lord, could you give me this job within a month? We have our own particular time. We have our own appointed time, but God has His own appointed time. 
we get frustrated, we get impatient because we cannot wait or we don't understand God's appointed time. And then Genesis 21 tells us that Sarah bears a child on God's appointed time. And guess how long was that? 25 years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just wait for his appointed time. It might be delayed for us, but not with him. Okay? It's up to Lazarus. Was Jesus, was Jesus late to rescue Lazarus from death? No. No? Why was he late then? Was it intentionally? He, did, did he delay? He's coming to Lazarus? Uh, he's never ready and then once he's here. Okay. So Jesus didn't come right away to Lazarus because he wanted his disciples and the people to know that even a dead person, Christ can raise him up. Amen. Amen. That's why when he prayed for Lazarus to be raised up, he said, Father, I know you keep hearing me and will always hear me, but for the sake of the people around me, bring Lazarus to life again so that they will believe in me. Amen. Amen. So he was never late. Yeah, uh, but sometimes we think, Lord, where are you? What happened to my prayers, Lord? I've been praying for 20 years already. Where is it? Have you experienced that attitude? No. You might not be that disappointed with the Lord, but in your mind, you are playing this, uh, this thoughts. You are struggling with these thoughts, whether you believe in God, you believe in His Word, or you believe in the devil's lies. Am I right? Okay. He came to the rescue. He is not a respecter of persons. There is no partiality, so if he, he came to his disciples, he will come to you as well. Amen. Okay? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Sorry to say, our friends will change, our loved ones will change, but the good thing is God will never change. Amen. Okay? Since it's used in life, miracles go happen. Do you believe in that? What is meant by miracle anyway? Any idea? Uh, things happen to Beyond normal or... <laughs> okay, so Jesus walked on the sea. It's a miracle. Why? Miracles overrides the law of nature. Are you with me? Miracles overrides the law of nature, okay? When the specific gravity of a substance is less than the specific gravity of water, then it will flow. Let's say for example, if you mix oil to the water, what happens to the oil? It will flow because its specific gravity is less than the specific gravity of water. Obviously, which one is not heavier? We are the water. We are the very than the water. So we should not see a flow, but we should see. The fact that Jesus walked on the water, it was a miracle. Yes? Why? Because miracles do happen. So if miracles happen, we should expect as if a day or a single day is an occasion for a miracle. Amen? We, all things are possible to those who believe. Whatever circumstances we have, miracles could happen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Yes? Amen. Okay. Miracles are available to those who believe. Amen. You just have to believe and miracles are available to you. Why are you laughing? <laughs> uh, uh, in Tagalog, miracles or Himala means a different thing. Himala or milagro. Because Himala is God given or God, God, uh, God initiated happening, but milagro they say, gawa daw ng tao. <laughs> Nabuntis yung asawa, wala yung asawa, milagro yun. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> okay, so 
Seven days yun, Jesus would have passed them by. Okay? He left where he prayed to rescue them. But, what was his point of pretending to pass them by? Any idea? Hello? Are you with me? Let's have, let's have an example. This, this is the situation. Jesus was praying on the mountain. What could he be praying for? For people. Huh? For people. Which particular people? For the disciples. Which, which disciples? The one who were? Okay, the 12 disciples or the one who were in the storms of life. Or having the storms in the sea. Okay, so here's Jesus in the mountain praying. He left the mountain, he left praying to rescue them. But the Bible tells us he was about to pass them by. What's this point? Any idea? Just to test them. Just to test them? Or what kind of test? Ah. Huh? You faith. You faith. In what way? Okay, so <laughs> okay, I, I would like you to understand this. Let's say, for example, this uh, this is the place where the disciples were. Here's Jesus walking on the water, and then he was about to pass them by. What happened if he passed? He simply passed them by. Huh? Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. They think he was a goat. <laughs> okay, okay. Imagine yourself. Imagine yourself. You were striving hard because there was a storm in the sea. It was 3 o'clock already. And then, here comes Jesus walking on the water. Who would you think that was? That's like being scared. <laughs> okay, I have my own experience. Uh, last Friday, I went to work and uh, because I'm gone from driving for a month, I, I was I was walking to work. I was walking on a tree on my own. Uh, this is a tree and then lots of trees. I was walking on my own. I was meditating. I was concerned of the time and then I suddenly hear a noise from behind. I wasn't scared, but I could not deny that my ears were standing. <laughs> it's an automatic response. But the good thing is, my heart wasn't in trouble. Yeah. Are you with me? <coughs> okay, so, mine was a different story. Here comes the disciples. They were striving hard, rowing against the wind, and then it was 3 o'clock as if they're going nowhere, and then now they see a man walking on the on the water. If it was you, what would your reaction? Scared. Scared. And then Jesus was pretending to pass the why. What's the this point? What he wanted from them? Help or call for help. Yes, okay. He wanted them to call for him. Okay, so th that's the disciples. Here's Jesus walking. If they didn't call for me, then Jesus would have passed him by. Do you agree with me? Yeah. And that's what happened with most of us. We've got plenty of problems, we have crises in life, but we don't call for him. So Jesus would have passed by you. Am I right? Did you agree with me? If you don't agree with me, then you can preach. I'm still down. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, so if you won't call on him, he could just pass by us. We miss a lot of opportunities because we simply allow him to pass by. I'll show you an example. Do you know Bertimaeus? Yeah. What is he like? You don't know about the males, what is he like? He's a blind man. He's a blind man. He's a blind man. Simple as that. My goodness. <laughs> but the males is a blind man. What's the good thing with a blind man? Cannot see. Huh? The good hearing. 
Dus je kunt niet met de plein met die gaat zien, of die gaat net zien. Why? Because he called for him. But he wasn't there. He, he didn't go there for Bartimaeus. This, but the fact that Bartimaeus called for help, he went for him. Amen? Okay. So eight issues in life. Their fears were exposed when? Verse 49. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. NLT translation. Are you still with me? Okay, it was one of their means that a ghost or evil could have caused the storm. You understand me? My goodness, I have to, I have to make sure you understand, or else, what is he talking about? Okay, a myth is just like a, a, a super, superstitious belief. They, they believe on, on, on uh, gods, as should, as should I say. Yeah. So, if I say it was one of their myths, okay, they, that a ghost or evil could have, could have caused the storm. How many hours they were striving? Nine hours. Are they going so, somewhere? No. Are they, have they lost their home? Maybe. There's, there's, they're afraid already. They're scared. But if they say it's their myth, if I say it's their myth, they could have believed that the evil or ghost should have caused the, the problem. Are you with me? Yeah. Do, you, do you still believe in, do you still believe in uh, unseen spirits? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do they exist? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 yes they exist. Yes. They are the fallen angels. They are the one third of the armies of heaven. They are fallen now. They are on earth now working against us. Although we cannot see them, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Are you with me? So when, when they had the storm, they thought that the ghost or eagle was the one causing the storm. That's why they think Jesus was a ghost. Are you following? Okay? When you are afraid, anything could come to your mind. It's true. Do you remember? Do you remember that husband when having an operation? <laughs> and and he, yeah, he told the wife, oh, please, please look after our three children. They're still small. And then the wife slapped him because the wife said nobody died of circumcision. <laughs> he's just having circumcision, and he thought he's dying. Why? Because anything could. Uh, well, we, uh, even we could think of anything when we're afraid. Anything could, could happen. Okay? The thought they, uh, they, they thought he was a ghost, but our thought is different from this. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9, God's thoughts is different from our thought. Okay? Luke chapter 24 verse 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that is myself, I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have a flesh, and bones, as you see, I have. So in other words, although it wasn't written on this occasion, Jesus could have told them, a ghost doesn't have a flesh or bone, but I have. Believe me. Yes? Can you connect the point? Do I, need, do I have to carry on? Hello? Okay, so the presence of fear signifies the absence of faith. When you are fearful, when you are afraid, that means your faith is finished. Why? Faith and fear could not exist together. 
When you have faith, you won't fear, but if you fear, that means your faith is gone. Why? Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand towards Peter and called him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And it happens to us. When we are scared, when we are doubtful, when we are afraid, our faith is gone. And in, in, in Mark, Mark chapter 4, verse 14, this is worse than what happened to Peter. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So it is clear from here that if you fear something, you don't have faith. Why? Fear is believing on things. What could go wrong? Faith is believing on what could go right. <coughs> Which one do you have? Fear or faith? Faith. faith. Are you sure? All the time? You believe in things that, that could go right? Yes? So I hope, <laughs> sorry to sorry to say, <laughs> uh, I won't mention her name, but sorry to say that uh, there are people who, who are afraid in the dark. There are people who are afraid to walk on their own. Why? Because they are fearful. They believe on what could go wrong. They don't believe on what could go right. Yes. Amen? Yes. Okay, I will explain a bit of that later. God's word is what we need to walk on water. I'm not teaching you, you need to walk on water just like that, uh, just like the one in video, the one who, who hold the bus. Uh, well, what's his name? Dynamo or? Dynamo. I'm not teaching you that you, you have to walk on the water because I said God's word is what we need to walk on water, but it could be a water of problem. It could be a sea of problem or oceans of uh, of life crisis. Okay, so Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said. Take courage because I am here. Amen. Amen. So whatever you are facing and you're afraid, you are fearful, God said, take courage. Don't be afraid because he is with us. Because he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Okay. The state or quality of mind, the courage is the state or quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face danger or fear. So courage doesn't mean there is no fear, but despite the fear, you are still in a state of mind where, where you are able, you are able to face the danger of fear. Just like I said, Pakyo could have uh, deal with his fear. You agree with me? But he could have, have so many fears, but he dealt with it. He coped with it. He didn't allow his fear to control him, but the good thing, even if he has fear, he is taking courage, so he won. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, I just, just a illustration. When uh, I was in college, uh, my event was struck and fear. But even with drunk and fear, it's not a boxing, it's not a boxing match. But I, I feel nervous before before running the the, uh, the contest, uh, before competing, I go to the toilet. Why? Because I was nervous. How was all in boxing? Well, uh, what, what movie was that? Karate Kid was it? Karate Kid with Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan and the black black uh, black boy. No offense, it's not different discrimination. Discrimination, it's not white anyway. No, 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 no. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> when Jackie Chan asked him, when Jackie Chan asked him, why do you need to fight this boy? He said, I want to fight him because after fighting him, I want to get out of the door, not afraid of anything. Yeah. At least he, he dealt with his fear. He took the courage to face his fear. How about us? With the challenges of life, with the crisis of life, with the storms of life we're facing, are we taking courage? Amen. Even if it's, it's not a 
problem, even if it's not a difficulty, if, even if it's just a responsibility, are we taking courage to, to take that responsibility? My, my, what, what comes first when, when I was caught <laughs> over speeding last August 4 in North Wales, and then uh, as to what I know, if it's above 100 miles per hour, my license will be revoked. So what, first thing that comes into my mind, what happened if I will, uh, I will be suspended for two years? What happened if I, uh, my license will be revoked? Then I just have to face it. Whatever it is, even if I'll be suspended for a year or two, I will still go for Bible study in Punha. I will still go for Bible study in Harstead. Why? Because that's courage. You're dealing with your fear and you are able to face them. Amen? And this, are you with me? Okay? Good cheer, in other translation, good cheer means lightness of spirits or mood. When you have problems, when you are facing your crisis in life, are you having a good cheer? Are you having lightness of spirits or in a good mood? Or, hmm, don't irritate him. Don't try to joke with him because he's in a bad mood. Oh! And lots of Christians are behaving like that. Don't talk to me, I'm not in a good mood. No. Hallelujah. A person who is in a good cheer is always having lightness of spirit. So you can always joke with him, you can always talk to him, you can always bear with him because he's happy having lightness of spirit. He's having a good mood. Even if, even if he was busted, even if he was dumb, even if he got, he got problems, he has bad news in the Philippines, he's still in a good mood. Amen. Jesus said, be of good cheer, I am here with you. Amen. Does it apply to us? Do we behave like that when Jesus said, be of good cheer, I am with you? Baka sabihin mo, maybe you. <laughs> Okay? So, Jesus is with you. This is the reason why we have to be a good cheer. We take courage because Jesus is with us. Okay? Last issue, I'm almost finished. Their hearts were hardened. Verse 52 says, okay, let's read verse 51. Then he climbed into the boat and the winds, the winds stopped. They were totally amazed for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracles of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. When the Bible tells us that their hearts were hard or too hard to take it in, there are people who are trying to ignore what they hear or ignore what they see. Are you with me? Although they understand you, especially especially with agency 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 healthcare assistance, we've got plenty of them. They know what to do, but they pretend that they don't know what to do because they don't want responsibility. And I should say, Christians know how, knows what to do. We believe or we know our responsibilities, but we just pretend that we don't know because it's too hard to take in our hearts. Okay, I'll show you. Matthew chapter 14, verse 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Is, is it you that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you cannot see it from here. Okay? In Matthew chapter 14, verse 32, Jesus was walking on the water, and then, as soon as he got into the boat, the wind ceased. Could you take it in? No. Are you bothering what I'm trying to say? Could it be just our situation that we are, although there is no storms in life, we are not facing crisis in life, we just don't get, or we just don't have the peace from God because that means He is not within our hearts. He is not within our boat. Why? Because it tells us when Jesus gets into the boat, the wind ceases. We could still be in crisis, we could still be in circumstances, difficult challenges in life, but if Jesus with, is with us, what matters most is what is inside us. Are we having peace? Are we not troubled? Are we not scared? Am I talking to anybody? 
anybody here? No, no, no. Okay, another thing. John chapter 6, verse 21. Then they willingly receive him into the boat, and immediately the boat was up the land where they were going. Maybe you didn't realize that verse. You have you haven't given emphasis on that verse. You haven't given attention on that verse. How long were they struggling again? Nine, Nine hours. Uh, how 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 far have they traveled? Uh, and then when Jesus get into the boat, they were in the land where they were going. Hallelujah. How I wish, how I wish we could picture out ourselves in their situation that after nine hours of struggling, as if you're going nowhere, and then when you receive Jesus into your boat, into your heart, you're already there. Ah. Yes. Do you think it could happen to us? Okay, let's say let's say for example. Anybody here who is not struggling against financial needs? Please tell me. <laughs> Everybody. Because if you're not experiencing financial needs here or you're not struggling, I will I would like to ask your secret. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is since we are struggling, we could be working hard. We could be working two jobs. We could be working overtime, but all of a sudden, our efforts come to nothing. You don't even know where your expenses go. Like water. You try, you try to calculate where did your salary goes, and it's all there. Especially when you are not using cash, you're just using your car. You can see your bank statement. Oh, it's all there. And how come? It's just I don't feel I don't feel my money last within my wallet. But last with him in a car. It's gone. <laughs> As if you're going nowhere. And then all of a sudden, you surrender yourself to Jesus. Lord, I can do anything apart from you. I, even with my finances, I allow you to be the king and Lord of my life. And then, Amen. And then you just suddenly realize, God is more than enough. You are going. Oh, when it comes to blessings, especially finances, you're eager enough to clap your hands. <laughs> Change! <laughs> Is your heart harder to take these things in? Do you still refuse to believe? Do you still ignore God's word? Do you still ignore the miracles He has done? No. Okay? Are you, are you careful in dealing with the issues of life? Because sometimes, although we know God's word, we have heard God's word, sometimes we are just per, uh, easily persuaded with what we see. Sometimes what we hear destroys our faith. So we should be careful with what we see, we should be careful with what we hear, because we don't, we don't live by sight, but we live by faith. Conclusion again, Proverbs 4, 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Amen. Amen. As they say, looks are deceiving, so be careful with what you see. Be careful with what you do. Amen. I invite you to stand up.